Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple, it's simple, such a sad song. The one that... The one that we rely on to get us. Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. I'm your host with the most, Devin Harris, and how are you guys doing? Um, no, I'm doing good. It's an interesting show today. We're going to talk about Justin Bieber. And his new yummy music video, whatever your thoughts are with that. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about my intense love for Post Malone. Um, I'm going to talk about J-Lo a little bit and how, you know, she almost became a stripper. And we'll talk a little bit about Kylie Jenner. We're here to talk about the new video that Justin Bieber just put out called Yummy. A new song. He just released a music video for it couple of days ago and I sat down to watch it and I was thoroughly confused as I am with most things these days I feel like I have a history with being very confused let's get into it Burr has not released anything for us in four years and he broke that by releasing yummy the single and the music video. So he just arrived. Uh, he had just announced a new album, which he announced was going to tour. And he also announced that he had a new YouTube documentary series, Seasons, that is coming out January seventh or January twenty seventh. Excuse me. And there will definitely be more songs about Haley besides Yummy. Even though if you're listening to Yummy, you wouldn't know it's about Haley because all he says is Yummy. That's all that he says. It's just Yummy. So, we start the music video. He's wearing pink. He has pink hair. He walks and sits down at a fancy table in front of a bunch of Amy Winehouse-looking violin players. Um, Even though he's at a fancy restaurant... He's eating fries and jello, and he keeps doing this thing with his head. Like, he looks like a bobblehead. Like, he keeps, like, winking and, like, doing things with his lips. Like, his head is just going. <laughs> it's going. And if I were watching this, or if if I were sitting at a, a table with Justin Bieber just winking at me, I would text my mom to come pick me up because it's quite scary. He just keeps nodding his chin. It's like, do you, do you, are you okay, dude? So right away, I noticed that he had on the pink hoodie and the pink hair, but he looks strung out. I'm I'm not even going to front. He looks strung out. My partner watched this with me and he said it looked like Justin in this video looks like Eminem whenever Eminem started getting strung out on drugs. So basically in the song, he's just, you know, you can't really gather anything from what he's saying, but he's surrounded by a bunch of food, a bunch of rich people, and he keeps saying yummy. So apparently if you look deep what you'll get. I'll read it for you. Yeah, you got that yummy yum, that yummy yum, that yummy yummy. Yeah, you got that yummy yum, that yummy yum, that yummy yummy. Say the word on my way. Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. Yeah, babe. Any night, any day, say the word on my way. In the morning or the late, say the word on my way. So we got this really hard-hitting expose from Justin you know it's just it's golden globes worthy it's not it's really not it's 
him sitting and eating, saying yummy, yummy, being cracked out, dancing on the table. And it kind of escalates into this fever dream type situation that we've found ourselves so many times in in the past couple of weeks with cats and with John Mulaney and the Sack Lunch Bunch. It just kind of doesn't make a lot of sense. It really doesn't help that halfway through the video, his face starts like contorting and like stretching and doing these weird things. I I had to blink. I was like, am I seeing that correctly? Or did his chin just like grow three inches and his eyes got all googly and it's just really weird. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Basically, it's three and a half minutes of Justin Bieber winking at me and cats walking across the table in a waste of time. That's that's what I think. So he's releasing his first album since 2015. His 2015 album was Purpose, and not being a Justin Bieber fan, like, ever, Purpose was surprisingly a good album. You had Sorry, which was catchy. You had that one where he sang about his mama not liking anybody, or liking everybody, but not liking whoever he was talking about. I think it was called... Don't like you, but I don't she like anyone else. Yourself. It was called Love Yourself. And then he had, What do you mean? What do you mean? That one. What do you mean? That's what it's called. And it was it was good. Um, I can't believe that was five years ago. Um, you know, we haven't heard anything from him. Apparently he has a YouTube documentary seasons that's coming out about his life and everything. I probably am not going to give it the time of day because I feel like he's vapid and he has, it's, he screams first world problems to me and I'm just not interested, you know? He dropped this single and music video on New Year's Day. And when you hold that up to what's going on in the world, I mean, like, the World War Three trending thing? No, it's not. Justin Bieber, you don't matter in the grand scheme of the world. And I think that he has this idea in his head that he does matter. Um, and I just don't vibe with it. I'm going to talk a little bit about Haley Bieber now. So Haley Bieber, who used to be Baldwin, she's the daughter of Alec Baldwin. After Yummy was dropped and fans started making the connection between the lyrics and her, she spoke out on her Instagram about all of the hate that she gets and talking about how it's mentally damaging and how everybody co compares her to Selena and how that messes with your head. And I just have to say, for being in the spotlight, for one, being Alec Baldwin's daughter, I hadn't heard much from her. I still haven't heard much from her, even after she married Justin Bieber. And apparently she's a model. She seems pretty humble. Um, coming after Selena, I can see why she would get a lot of hate. Um, Justin and Selena were together for about eight years. You know, there are still so many stands out there who think, you know, no one's ever going to replace Selena. Um, but she, Haley, holds herself with this kind of poise, you know. I can't imagine what, how mentally strong she would have to be to not only live in the public eye, not only live in the public eye after selena but also live in the public eye with justin and having people say you know you're not you're you're not gonna last you guys aren't gonna last you're too young uh he's still in love with selena you know and having people constantly compare you to your partner's previous partner like can you imagine that if your current partner if you had people on your instagram saying you know we like his ex better like your relationship would be over stat and i think this is another reason that social media is so damaging not only to your mental health but to you and your relationships with others more specifically your relationship with your partner scrolling every day and seeing you know oh so and so just got engaged or so and so is planning their wedding and look at that look at that diamond on her finger and ooh they they went 
they vacationed in Bali or, you know, they just bought this big house and you look and it's like, you could have the greatest, you could have the greatest partner. You could have the greatest relationship, a partner who treats you like a queen. You could get along so well, you have such a good thing going and you can look next to you or scroll through Instagram and feel like shit because we live in a culture of comparison these days where social media is just so damning to your self-confidence nothing is good enough because you're constantly comparing your whole life unedited to somebody's edited best of real and it's just not possible to feel like you ever measure up i feel for this girl living in the public eye and being with such a prolific and um, controversial person, being married to Justin Bieber, you know, she holds herself pretty well, I'd say, for being married to him. Haley said that particularly after um, Selena released Lose You to Love Me, her single that she released towards the end of 2019, she received a lot of hate because in that song... Selena singing about how she had to lose herself, or she had to lose her partner, whoever she was talking about in that song, we don't know, fans can only assume it was Justin, to find herself again, and so, you know, Haley got a lot of, a lot of hate, and it, it, it started stirring up the pot around that time, and she just, she came out saying, you know, it hurts, and it tear, it's, it feels terrible to be torn apart on social media people are super aggressive to her in response to comparing her to selena and she can only imagine the inside of that relationship she must have to be a pretty secure person to deal with that stuff i think it's a great testament to the strength of the people we see on tv every day because we can sit here and say all day long, oh, you know, I want to live in the lap of luxury and I want to be famous and stuff, but you don't really understand that whenever you live in the public eye, nothing that you do is private. Everything you do, every single move you make is up for debate and you will be ripped apart if you read everything that people say about you. I can only imagine the struggle it is to be somebody who's in the public eye. When we come back, we're going to be talking about somebody else who's in the public eye, Mr. Post. This man could literally kick me in the teeth, and I would say thank you. I love him so much. We'll be talking about him, about what he has coming out, about his new tour, and more. Stay here with us on the GSMC. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. this man he's from grapevine texas and i feel just such a kinship with him so he is kicking off the second leg of his hollywood bleeding hollywood's bleeding that's the name of his latest album he's kicking off the second north american leg for his tour on february 4th and it's going all the way until march 21st and tickets are on sale now. Um, if anybody is wondering, you know, I wear a size six Post Malone ticket, so you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fret. My address is, and I'm just kidding. I would never put my address on the internet, but I want to go see Post Malone so bad. Quickly, 
top those charts, man. He is on top of the charts. Quickly after he released Hollywood's Bleeding, he topped the charts again. And although there is some variation, he always ends up back at the top. He's last decade's, you know, artist to watch. And I'm really excited to see what he releases this year. And I feel so close to him, to Posty, because he hails from Texas. If you guys didn't know, I broadcast from Texas, and he is from Grapevine, which is pretty close to me. Um, so I feel, you know, I got that to my advantage. Posty's from Texas, you know, our us Texas people must be pretty cool. In reference to Justin Bieber, who we talked about on the last segment, Post Malone is going to be on Justin Bieber's new album, along with Travis Scott and Kalani, who I love Kalani as well. Um, so they, the part with Post is all finished. Justin recorded and finished his part, and now Post just has to post his part. So I'm super excited for that. That means we get a new Post song soon. I don't exactly know when the album is going to drop or what it's called, but it's supposedly called Forever. And given that he's like in love with his wife, Justin Bieber, I wouldn't be surprised if it was called Forever. Supposedly going to drop in March. Yeah, Post Malone is our own little local legend. Austin Richard Post a.k.a. Post Malone, a.k.a. Posty, was born in New York, but he was raised in Dallas, Texas, more specifically Grapevine, taught himself to play guitar and produce music in high school, and then dropped his own independent mixtape at 16. I don't know how any of you would not know who Post Malone is, but if you need a little bit of a background, he sang that song, Sunflower, with Sway Lee for the spider-man into the spider-verse soundtrack and he also has sung congratulations and rock star and psycho personally my favorite song my favorite post song is probably go flex or um stay you know he has a huge library of styles even though he is kind of like pop trap hip-hop 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 He's, he can do rock. He sang with Ozzy Osbourne. He does, like, cloud rap. He can do acoustic. He's super versatile. Um, and he has great vocals, you know. His first single was White Iverson, which wasn't, you know, classically trap. Um, it was kind of a softer sound. It put him on the radar. I feel silly for loving him so much because he's so mainstream. And my toast... Oh my goodness, Devin. My tastes, my toasts, my tastes aren't necessarily mainstream. I like cl- classic rock, like Fleetwood Mac, and I like Aerosmith, and Notes, and the like, but I do get into, you know, my, my music tastes are so versatile. I get into, you know, the top 40, and it's because of him. I like his music. And I think I like him because he's so funny. I often, you know, they. Ha- I, whenever I see things on YouTube, I'm, that's my biggest platform, I watch them. And the videos that I watch in his interviews, he's funny. He did a Hot Ones challenge, you know, the wing challenge. And it's hysterical. I think in the age of these celebrities having these luxurious lives, we're attracted to people who act like us and who are down to earth and live the kind of lifestyle even though they're successful and brilliant artists they live the same kind of lifestyle as us um he posts things like you know met a koala today and it's like he has the exact same reaction that i would have if i met a koala he likes things that everyone else likes you know he doesn't have to be having everything dripping and you know designer and at big fat mansions and stuff like people who are humble celebrities who are humble it kind of lowers you know it's it it tightens the gap between oh we're here and you guys are down there you know if our favorite artists you know if they're humble and they live the same kind of lives we do i tend to like those people better because it's like 
oh, I can vibe with that person. You know, it's they're not some kind of snot. The <laughs> the original reason I chose to talk about post in this um, segment before I got carried away with my love for him was because he got a new face tattoo. He has so many tattoos, over 50 tattoos. And funny enough, wow, I tied this episode so well together he got his first tattoo when he was on tour with justin bieber and um justin's tattoo artist came through and he decided you know i'm way tougher than justin bieber and he has now over 50 tattoos and tattoos on his face and stuff you know it's post he can do what he wants he got a gauntlet of all things he got a gauntlet he has cards, he has a knife, he has a little Playboy tattoo, and a heart tattoo, but he got a huge gauntlet right over his right ear. And, you know, if if nothing screams Post Malone more than a gauntlet tattoo, I don't know what does. So, that's the news, that's all I had to say about Post Malone, but I got carried away with how much I love him. When we come back, we're going to talk about J-Lo and the new Hustlers movie and how she almost turned to stripping. And girl, I've been there. I mean, I don't mean to sound too get candid, but you know, when you can't eat and you can't pay your rent, we're going to, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Stay right here with the GSMC social media news podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. traced back to the Bible, where some interpreters tell us that the daughter of the Jewish princess Herodias seductively performed the dance of the seven veils to please King Herod, and he was so impressed that he granted the daughter anything she desired. So we're going to talk a little bit a little bit about stripping, where it came from, the new movie Hustlers featuring J-Lo, Kiki Palmer, Lily Reinhardt, Lizzo, and Cardi B. What is stripping? That's a silly question. Everybody knows what stripping is, but when did it become popular? So in my early, you know, anecdote, the earliest existing, you know, instance of stripping is in the Bible, where in order to get what they want, you know, women would use their sexuality and, you know, in a male-dominated culture, use seductivity and their feminine wiles to, you know, get what they want. I hear so many times women being put at fault for doing this and, you know, men calling women whores and sluts because they use their sexuality to get things that they want. And in this movie, Hustlers, which is um, still in theaters, I think. It might be at the Dollar Theaters, or it might have just moved over to on-demand video. 
the ladies do exactly that. It's, um, these ladies, all star cast strippers in New York, and they are actually, they strip for the men on Wall Street. So I assume their location is somewhere on Wall Street. And they say, you know, these men, they robbed this country blind. And so, who is anybody to tell us that we don't take what we deserve? Because the country, this country, plays by nobody's rules. The people that play by the rules lose all the time. So who are we to sit back and let the people who have driven our country into the ground prosper and i'm telling you after i saw this trailer initially i was not invested in this movie whatsoever but after i saw this trailer and i saw jlo's article you know i almost turned to stripping my mind changed i now i want to see this movie and now i know what i'm probably going to do tonight not stripping <laughs> i'm not going to become a stripper and i'm not going to go to the strip club but i'm incredibly interested in this side of the story so stripping originated you know there was seductive dancing turned into belly dancing turned into go-go dancing and then turned into um dancing for money and eventually you know um people less and less clothes <laughs> it wasn't always you know um dancing with no clothes on but it, it evolved and now strippers actually do get naked bottom line women in this industry commonly called strippers, get paid to sexually titillate men by dancing suggestively as in as little clothing as possible without getting arrested. And that is stripping. But why is it why is it women that strip? Why do men not strip? And the obvious answer is people pay to see the female body. And in a society where people pay to see the female body, how can you tell a woman that she is ashamed for taking off her clothes for money? In a society where we put the female body on a pedestal and we tell people, you need to look like this to be successful. You need to look like this to be attractive. And it's not just men. A majority of it is, is men. Men covet the female body. Men create works of art and inspiration from the female body. Yet, when it's turned around and women use it to their advantage, we become whores. Or so men say. I feel like women are looked down for stripping because people are against... A woman requiring something in return for her sensuality or sexuality. And whether this is a byproduct, byproduct of society or whether this is a misogynistic idea, is, are women looked down on for being strippers because they're degrading themselves? Or is it because people feel like they shouldn't have to, they shouldn't offer this for money R requiring something in return for sensuality or sexuality is bad because riddle me this if if you, if you're a woman and you're using your best asset aside from knowledge the way you want to because people have sexualized your body forever and you're finally taking advantage of the system how is it not misogynistic for somebody to call you a whore? How is it not misogynistic for somebody to try and define what should make you feel degraded? Seems like it's not an issue for somebody to take what they want from a woman without asking when it comes to sexual assault or sexual violence or even domestic violence. But as soon as a woman realizes the power lies in her hands, oh no, no, no. Society is quick to say, check yourself at the door, honey. You're not classy. You know? Think about that. It's just, it's food for thought. We're going to be woke in 2020. I mean, I wouldn't be a stripper. I have to say, there have been times in my life where things have been rough, as I'm sure for any other person, where it's 
you know, it's been like a thought, you know, man, I could just, I can make thousands, you know, and I can make a thousand in a week, but I've never pursued it. Who's to say, you know, somebody who did try and pursue it is lower than me. So weighed in on this. And she said she nearly turned to stripping when she was trying to get a foot in her career in Hollywood. In the new movie Hustlers, J-Lo plays a role, Ramona, in, in Hustlers, and it scored her a Golden Globe nomination. So she sat down in an interview and she admitted she nearly became a stripper. She said there was a moment in her life when her friends, who were also dancers, told her about making thousands of dollars at clubs in New Jersey. So similar to Hustlers, she was in New Jersey, whereas Hustlers was in New York. They said, you won't need to be topless. It sounded good when she was broke and eating pizza every day, every day but she never did it because she was a little bit nervous. JLo says that playing Ramona was empowering, intriguing, so intriguing that she didn't even accept payment for the role. She worked, produced, and starred in that movie for free. Hustlers is a lady-driven female empowerment movie showing women taking the power back into their hands and scheming the system. And that is my favorite pastime, working the system. Why do you have to sit there and be a victim to a system that doesn't serve you? Oof, this week I'm talking about scheming the system and I'm talking about privacy and I probably won't be here next week because the government's going to come after my butt. Anyways, when we come back, we are going to be talking about Kylie Jenner and what the heck is going on with that new photo she released. Apparently, she's appropriating culture yet again, and it's January 4th. So we'll jump into that and more when we come back on the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Kardashians slash Jenners has been accused of cultural appropriation. This time it's Kylie Jenner. She, well, she's, she's done it before. She, she's definitely had some cultural appropriation claims in the past, but mostly it's been sister Kendall Jenner. Kylie Jenner, star of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, um, Life of Kylie, and Main creator of her new makeup line, Kylie Cosmetics, is under fire again for a previously unseen picture from a past photo shoot on her Instagram. In this picture, Kylie's hair is dyed blonde and put in wraps, a protective African-American hairstyle, and put in two ponytails in a messy bun type form. Automatically, People are in an outrage, um, telling her that they're, she's appropriating um, black hair, and I'm tired. I'm honestly tired of the call-out culture. It's old. It seems like it's just catty. Like It seems like it's, anybody will find anything to be angry about these days and the reason I say this 
about this particular issue is because Kylie Jenner's makeup and hair team decided to create this look based off of Gwen Stefani um, and the old, you know, Harajuku style that she used to inhibit. And in that case, you know, that if, if this is a problem, that should be a problem. And the fact that this wasn't a problem 10 years ago, why is it a problem now? If Gwen Stefani was using, you know, hair and makeup and fashion inspired from Harajuku and Tokyo hot couture in the 2000s, why isn't this a problem now? I feel like Americans, instead of realizing, you know, fashion and style is drawing from all of these different cultures, and that's what style and fashion is, they just find a reasons to get mad at each other and it is exhausting to be a part of that culture. Selma Blair, star of Legally Blonde, recently posted another picture of herself and was dragged for the same thing, only Selma Blair was wearing a hair wrap. So Selma Blair has MS, um, which is an autoimmune disease. She's always feeling sick, always vomiting, you know, can't move, can't even speak and has lost her hair because of it. So she posted on Instagram a picture of her hair in a silk wrap, and people just bombarded her for it, for cultural appropriation. She, her in the, in the picture was Rachel Fleet. Um, be, she had alopecia, so she was also wearing a hair wrap, and the the Instagram post said, the caption was, we have one answer to your bad hair days or no hair days. Alopecia. Wraps. It's been around for thousands of years. And people automatically, you know, cultural appropriation and it's not brilliant and it's not cool. Um, we want to appropriate this and make it t- trendy, you know? No, we, d- we don't get to do this. You guys don't get to do this. And it's like, Wearing a silk wrap because you don't have hair, is that imitating? Imitation is the highest form of flattery, no? And funnily enough, silk silks absorb negativity and diffuse it. So none of these comments are relevant. Would they rather her wear an itchy wig? And it's just like, at what point will people stop being angry for no reason? The plight of not being able to embrace, I say I understand, I do not understand it. I see why people are angry, because had a black American tried to wear this hairstyle to work, they would be told to go change it and make it more presentable. Now, is that true today? No, it's not. Black, I'm not going to say no, it's not, because I would get just as angry if people were trying to defend men in the workplace and say that, you know, the workplace is equal for men and women. It still is not 100% equal. The workplace is still not 100% equal for blacks and whites and all other minorities. Are there instances where a black person will still get told, go make yourself more presentable if they wear, you know, a hair wrap or um, a scarf? Yes. Is that disgusting? Absolutely. Should it be that way? No. It shouldn't. But... To say that somebody cannot wear their hair in a wrap because it's cultural appropriation and that we're trying to make it trendy, I feel is a little bit overkill, honestly. The United States was made to be a melting pot of different cultures and different styles, different religions, ethnicities. I think there is not harm in embracing the styles of other cultures albeit if they're not religious or, you know, sacrificial in any way. But wearing your hair in in a braid, you know, how far are we going to go being angry at people before we realize that imitation is the highest form of flattery? You know, I'm not going to wear an African, you know, religious ceremonial dress and try and pass it off as, you know, I'm just trying to draw from another culture. But if I want to put braids in my hair, you know, 
not cornrows. Although, yeah, I'm just, I'm drawn on the issue. How, when are we going to stop getting mad at each other for, you know, trying different styles? And I know I have no room to speak because there's nothing even somewhat drawable from white culture. And I think at the end of the day, it should be looked at as a celebratory thing, you know? People having your culture be so beautiful that people want to incorporate a tribal print on their dress or, you know, want to try a hair wrap, you know, tastefully. So that's my two cents on cultural appropriation. Let us know what you think. When is enough enough? When we come back, we're going to be talking about TikTok and major privacy concerns that are coming up. Stay here with the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. world of social media the new shiny toy for all of the teens kids and even some adults i downloaded tiktok and i have not um cleared it from my phone yet um it's the latest and hottest download it's an app that's quickly gaining notoriety in the social media world um it's a way for people to have fun and be creative and express themselves kind of more than other apps in the past have allowed. There are several different features and filters and, you know, add-ons and installments that are constantly making the the app um, accessible and interesting for its users. But um, amidst all of this buzz, TikTok has flown relatively under the radar with privacy concerns until about a month ago. And it's been out for a little bit. So, there has been concern popping up lately about the app safety. And Tyler, my lovely boyfriend, has been telling me, you know, I'll ask him, please download TikTok so he can share funny videos. And I was like, you know, I don't want them taking my information. And I'd say, ah, pish posh, you know. Yes, Tyler, you told me so. We're going to talk about it. So, some U.S. lawmakers are now saying that TikTok could pose a national security risk by asking intelligence agencies to investigate the company's ties to China. This week, this past week, the U.S. Army banned soldiers from using and downloading TikTok because it could potentially expose personal data to unwanted users tied back to China. So ABC News reached out to TikTok and they directed ABC to the company website where it said that TikTok is aware of, quote, ongoing questions about the content moderation and data security policies. The company says it's been taking a number of actions to preserve the trust of its users, like being transparent. It tells you right away that your data is being shared. But also, they said by building a team with U.S. leaders and storing users' data in its center outside of China. Um, Many people say that it's important to be aware of anything suspicious, no matter the app. So yes, privacy concerns have been a huge buzzing issue lately. 
Um, as some of you may know, I talked about it on the recent TV podcast, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, most of the social media apps that we use, they gather data on us. And it's a scary, scary thing. I'm hitting all of the hard-hitting, you know, privacy topics. And I joked, you know, the Illuminati, the the Pentagon is going to come get me for, like, talking all this deep security stuff. But you have to be careful about what you post. People joke that those quizzes or those, you know, those face, those, there's this new trend um, this week on Instagram where it's like an app someone, or not an app, a filter someone created and you tap on it and it shows you like a list of, you know, like what Hogwarts character are you from Harry Potter and you put your face in there. It uses face, facial recognition and it gives you a character that you most are like has no correlation to who you actually are. It's randomly generated and there are like 10, 10 of these that have come out in the past couple of days and people joke you know ah ha 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 the NSA has my face for now and may and with all of the you know scare about having you know cameras watching us and having you know your FBI surveillance agent checking in on you through your computer camera you know people joke about this but it has to come from somewhere and this is what is scary you know these big social media brands, they take your profile and the stuff you click on and they share it. They share your data. They share the stuff you like, you know, and they sell it. They sell our data to brands, marketing brands that can use, you know, curated data so that they can update their algorithms to see what we like and it's kind of scary. Like our data and and our our information is out there. For example, menstrual apps. Tyler sent me this thing last night that said, you know, these menstrual apps where women can keep track of their menstrual cycle, they're using data from women to inform third parties about our lives and and what we need and and what's happening when like if I'm putting, you know, my cycle started yesterday, I'm having acne, um, I was sexually active, or I was grumpy, you know, like, these third-party apps, or these third-party, you know, users, they have my, my data now about what I was doing, when I logged in on the app, what my name is, what I like to eat, what, what age I am, you know, and then they have personal sensitive information, like my sexual activity, or when my cycle started, if I'm trying to have a child, it's, it's scary, it's scary, and there was a recent story on just how far technology is going, talking about how schools are starting to incorporate, you know, Bluetooth tracking into their students' web-based student portal. And so every time, you know, they walk into the room, the Bluetooth will ping to the phone app and say, you know, this student was here at a certain time. And um, some students really don't like this because it's like, why why are we still being treated like we're children? Why are we being tracked and followed? And why are people trying so hard to put their thumb down to figure out where we are? Why are we under people's thumb? That's what I was trying to say. And, you know, whenever people get watched like this, it's America, you know, the land of the free and everything. But when people start becoming, like, aware that they're being watched, you know, actions change. And why would anybody want to go to school? Why would anybody want to use these apps if they fear their privacy is at risk? And there's the the social rev- relevance algorithm that is like, you need to stay socially relevant. You need to download this app and keep it. And it's scary. It's marketing. It's marketing to get our information. So be careful about what you download. I know that I'm going to sit down and go through my apps Make sure to turn your chairing off. Make sure you do your research um, because we have no idea what really goes on 
with these apps and what we're sharing with the world until something bad happens. When we come back, I was unsure about what topic I wanted to do for my sixth segment, my sixth and final segment. So I decided to go online to a random topic generator and it asked me if I became president, well, the question was, if you became president, what is the first thing you would do? So I will answer this question, my random podcast topic generator question, when we come back. Stay here on the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere where you find podcasts just type gsmc in the search bar hi guys welcome back so before the break I posed you guys with the question that I picked for today. I was having a little bit of trouble figuring out what I wanted to do for my last segment, so I went to a random topic generator, and it gave me, what's the first thing you would do if you were elected as president? And I thought long and hard about this, and I decided that after kicking, you know, our current president out of the White House rather quickly, I think I would give paternity and maternity leave three months at least to new mothers. And for fathers, you know, at least a month would be great, if more. Um, And I think beyond that, I would allocate more funds to the arts, because the arts often get put behind sports. And Arts are important, you know. Arts are part of entertainment just as much as, you know, the football games are. And so I would allocate more funds to keep, you know, art programs alive in schools because art is important. Go without TV for a week and tell me I'm wrong. Um, that's really all I could think of, though. Maybe making Fridays a mandated holiday. Every Friday, mandated holiday. Um, everybody gets off work. (laughs) That'd be nice. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys. I hope you have a very safe and happy Sunday night. Catch us here next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, Leave us a review on our Facebook. uh, Like our YouTube channel and comment on our Twitter. We want to know what you guys want to hear. So leave us a comment. Tell us what you want us to cover. Interact with us. We want to know who you guys are. As always, have a very safe and happy evening, and I will see you guys on the next cast. Goodbye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.